It's, uh, the win over UCLA came at a tremendous cost. I know that has been a big topic uh, in Baton Rouge over the weekend with Harold Perkins. Yeah, very difficult. Uh, the game of football can be cruel in some instances when you uh, lose a player of uh, Harold's caliber. You can see his, uh, his right leg on that tackle got caught in the ground and unfortunately suffered a uh, season-ending injury to his right knee. Um, you know, obviously the... The, the details uh, will follow here. Uh, um, you know, our medical team uh, is still, you know, putting together uh, the final details relative to, uh, you know, what will happen next. But uh, suffice to say, so disappointed for the young man. He's worked so hard to put himself in a, a position to, you know, continue to, uh, you know, be the best at his position. Um, we moved him around to, you know, accentuate, you know, the talents that he has. Um, but now, you know, obviously, uh, we've got to, um, you know, move on and, and uh, get the next man up and ready. You know, we've had a couple of those. John Emery went down and uh, Caden Durham, a true freshman, stepped up and has played well for us. Uh, Jacoby and Gilroy was our only veteran defensive lineman went down and we brought in another true freshman and Otmar Bro. And we're going to have to do that again here. So, um, unfortunately, it's the nature of uh, the the college football landscape, football in general. But um uh, we'll, 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 we'll move on and uh, get ready for uh, South Alabama. And you mentioned those players, and it seems like uh, these things happen. And I, I, no, no injury is good, Coach. It seems like maybe right. when one ha happens late, uh, it's a little bit easier to understand. But when they happen this early in the season, uh, we as fans uh, can't understand it, and we're in shock. Uh, but, our, but as well as you are, but you still have to figure out a way to replace these people. It's not easy to uh, – while we talk about it, you're finding solutions, aren't you? Yeah, I mean, look, we could, we could, uh, you know, obviously cry all we want about it, but the reality of it is that, you know, the other ten players are looking for what are the solutions that the coaches have for us to, to move on and and uh, get ready for the next opponent. We've got a huge game against South Alabama. This is a good football team, and so we feel terrible for Harold and him and his family and what he's done. Uh, for our program and you know we wrap our arms around him immediately after so he knows how much we care about him but then we've got to move on to the next phase of this and that is you know getting a football team ready to play uh, in just six days so um, that's the tough part about this right I mean you just keep moving you, they don't give you a chance to you know sit around and think about it for you know 48 72 hours and you know we've got a plan in, in place um you know, that's why you have to develop your roster. That's why you have to build, you know, these guys into a position where um, they are ready uh, to step in and help you uh, win football games. I want to talk about something that has nothing to do with the actual football field, but it does involve the football field. And, and that, that was – finally, I think you have a night game coming up this weekend. But Saturday, last Saturday in Baton Rouge, and I was uh, only uh, in direct sunlight until about noon, I, I really don't know how – uh, anyone could have withstood uh, that that sun Saturday, and I know that I'm, I'm speaking of fans, but but on the field, uh, how, how do you cope with that? Just even as a coach, uh, and, and you're not you don't have a helmet and shoulder pads on. Yeah. Fair haired guy from Boston, Massachusetts, who's <laughs> in the Midwest all his life. Uh, I was I, I was thinking about the days where, you know, I had to be bundled up in South Bend and thought those were really good days again. That that must be bad uh, when it's that hot. But, you know, those are dangerous conditions. And, you know, I know Scott Woodward, our athletic director, is, is in contact with, you know, those that make these decisions. And, and it's tough. I get it. You know, everybody is looking at schedules and, and how to do it. I know the state of um, Arizona has a law in place in the, the month of September. I believe that you can't play a game before six o'clock. Maybe, maybe there's something that can be done there, but it was dangerous conditions. There's no doubt. And for those that sat on the visiting sideline, you could see that clearly they weren't in the game because at halftime, they, they couldn't stay in the conditions that they were in. I thought the players did an incredible job. Uh, both, both uh, the nutritionists, the, the athletic trainers, everybody associated with getting those football teams, uh, in a good place. Um, it did not affect the young men that were on the field. And that says a lot about the conditioning and training of those young men. But if you were sitting in those stands, um, it, it was real and it was dangerous. Yeah. Uh, and, and I, maybe because I, I was, I was down there and, and feeling it, I, I, I can connect with it more than had I been watching 
uh, on television, Coach, but in, you, you, the programs make a lot of money. We know that. Uh, there, there's, there's hundreds of millions of dollars, if not billions, overall. Um, but you, you alluded to what uh, the situation with Scott, but what, if anything, can you do? And I know I'm asking you the same question, but it, it just doesn't seem right, especially uh, for anyone, for the for players or fans. Yeah, again, I, I think you got to look at is is there some kind of legislation that you 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 know you, each state you know says look you can't play in the the month of September before a certain you know hour in the day. I mean, I, I think Arizona has that on the books. Uh, can we do that in in Louisiana? I'm not here. That's those are those are for the administration to make those decisions. But I think you and I both being there, seeing it and feeling it firsthand it's a conversation that's certainly going to have to take place at a much more serious level. This is not now just about, well, that was uncomfortable. No, this was serious. And so I think that everybody that's been associated with this game this weekend is going to have a serious conversation. Well, coach, let's talk about a, couple, uh, a brighter note. And that was Garrett Nussmeyer. Uh, certainly uh, your quarterback uh, continues to lead. We, uh, I believe we heard from him uh, in the post game once again. We can be a great football team. You beat a team that played well today. If you don't play well, you can't beat that team. You played well today, you won the game. So we've got to give out a game ball today. We've got to give out a game ball today. And when you orchestrate two drives of 90 plus yards, and during that time there were two national championship football teams that never did that, the guy that's running the show has got to be central to that, and he's got to be the player of the game. And that's Derek Nelson. You know, it, 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 I don't know. There, the, he, he, I don't know him like you do, of course. Uh, but he, he, he looked almost embarrassed to, to get the game ball uh, and to and to get the adulation from the head coach. You know, coach's son, very humble. Um, I think he's, you know, he's been brought up in this uh, this environment, right? And so, you know, but I, I would be, you know, remiss to say that, you know, a lot of times, you know, he's deflected. Uh, a lot of the praise and and sometimes you know Paul it's important that you can't always deflect the praise you've got to take some of it as well and he deserves it you know he's currently doing some things that have not been done here and, and you know we've had some pretty good quarterbacks matter of fact two of them are playing tonight against each other uh, two Heisman Trophy winners so um, you know he's a guy that that uh, at this position um, is, is playing at such a high level and and deservingly so he was the offensive player of the week as well so uh, good for Garrett and uh, you know he continues to drive our football team on the offensive side of the ball. And I want to end on that because uh, it, it is rare that a university uh, will get a, a stage in front of 15 to 20 some odd million people uh, as uh, LSU will tonight with with uh, Joe Burrow and, and Jaden. Uh, I realize you, you got to get ready for a game. You may be able to peek at it. But uh, just in terms of what tonight will, will mean uh, to your football program. Well, listen, it doesn't hurt in recruiting quarterbacks. That's for certain. <laughs> um, it does give you that ability to say, look, if you want to be that next guy, right, that that next potential Heisman Trophy winner, we can develop them here at LSU. And uh, nothing uh, speaks to it uh, better uh, than, you know, squaring off on Monday night football. So just a great audience, uh, great opportunity for us to to show uh, show two great young men as well in terms of what they've been able to do both on the field and off the field. Well, Coach, thank you. Congratulations again. Sorry so much uh, about uh, the Harold Perkins situation, but we will uh, be watching Saturday night and hope to see you right here next week. Thank you. Thanks, Paul. Thanks for having me on. Thank you very much, Brian Kelly, joining us from Baton Rouge. A lot happening uh, in uh, those quarters. Look